My name is Thurman Greco, and the name of this program is Let's Live with Thurman Greco. And our guest today is Savak. And Savak is here for his first massage with me. Savak has had a lot of massage. We could probably use another treat, maybe. Savak has had a lot of massage, but it's all been from with his his owner. And I do know Sabak very well because I've been around him and his mother for, for years. But this is the first time that Sabak has been in the limelight. And I have to tell you that Sabak is a very, um, he's a very special dachshund. He is a one owner Sabak, uh, a dachshund. And uh, his owner decided before she went out to find him that she needed to know all of the things that she needed to know in order to care for him perfectly. So Sabak has um, the best diet that she can find, which is a raw food diet. And, and you will see that with a raw food diet, he, he does have a very shiny coat. And uh, Sabak has uh, all of the things. He gets to go outside, and he has a fenced-in yard, and he goes to a little dog play group, and, and, you know, he does everything. But one thing that he's not getting right now is he's really not getting a weekly massage with his mother because um, we've always done the, the weekly massages at uh, the Little Dog Social Group. So now we're looking forward to having a lesson so that she can uh, review it on YouTube and give massage to Savak uh, regularly so that he will not be uh, massaged. One thing I will say about massage for this little guy, he is special because of his ears. His, Sabak's ears, well, right now they're cold because it's the middle of the winter we've been outside. But his ears have a lot of um, energetic points. And I... This is very, very spiritual here. When you have a pet who has the ears that you can get to, and they don't all have to have big ears, and they don't all have to have floppy ears, and they don't have to all have uh, stiff ears or whatever, but with these ears, you can give Sabak or your pet a very complete energetic massage by uh, massaging both the inner and the outer part of the ear, leather on the outside of the ear, in little dime-sized circles. And this is a wonderful, wonderful way that you can, that you can calm him down. Although, Sabak is saying, listen, I know there's other treats over there, and I want my treat right now, and I don't blame you. Keep after it, Sabak. Get all, get all the treats in the jar. Why not? After all, you've been hauled all the way out here just to get your ears massaged. There's got to be something more to it than this. But this is something that you can do while you're sitting on the sofa if you're reading a book or if you're uh, watching television. Uh, this is a really good way to relax both yourself and, and your pets. And this is good for cats. This is good for bunny rabbits. This is good for dogs. This, this kind of stretching and the, the, the dime-sized circles are ex excellent. And they are so luscious. And I'm actually heating up his little ears because little, his little ear flaps were, uh, were cold because, you know, we've got snow on the ground right now in, in Woodstock, New York. So here we go. We're doing this now. One of the things that we do with a, an animal, any dog, cat, rabbit, whatever, that you are getting ready to give massage to, you start at the head and you work back to the end of the tail. And there is one, one exception to this. The exception to this is that if you have an animal that's getting ready to go and do some kind of competition. And if your pet is going to do competition and 
is going to is at a, some kind of a rally or is at a um, a dog show of some kind and it's going to be running and jumping or whatever then you start at the base of the tail and work forward but you really start at the head and work back and because that's how that's what's more calming you go the way the coat goes so you will see that Sabak is very, very interested in his in his liver uh, treats, which is good. I mean, after all, you shouldn't just do something for nothing. Right? So we're working, we're working the head, and we're doing this. Now you can do this with with you can use your fingers, or you can use your thumb. You can use. You want to go all around in circles, all around, and I'll tell you what else. You want to do uh, the yeah. You want to do, go all around here. This is important. Whenever you are doing massage circles around the teeth and the mouth, you are actually massaging the gums, which is really really important because your dog's teeth, your cat's teeth, and your rabbit's teeth are more important to the overall health of that animal than they than your teeth are to you. Because the percentage of the body that is the mouth is much greater in one of your four footer uh, pets. So we've, we're doing this all around here and we are going around the throat. And we are also going here. Now this is where the thymus is and this is where the brachiocephalic chakra is. And it goes along here, the brachiocephalic chakra, is here and it's also on the upper part of the back of the spine and one of these days i'm going to do a, a chopper class which but right now we're just working with the basic uh, basic massage now one of the things that i am going to um, show that i have not demonstrated in in any previous massage classes and and i haven't done it but i am going to show here because sabak is a young uh, pet. So he has a lot of loose skin. And this is good. And notice how he's looking back. I'm, I'm pulling up his skin and he's saying, now wait a minute, what is this? This is something because as your pet gets older, there's less and less of this extra skin. So what you want to do is you want to pull on it. It doesn't hurt. You want to pull on it and you want to stretch it a little. And so we're going we're gonna to give Sabak a stretching massage all the way we're going to go. And he's very aware of it. Notice how he's turning around and he's saying, what is this that's happening to me? What is this old woman doing to me? I'm not used to you touching me. I'm used to you standing and talking a lot and my owner doing these things. I'm not used to you doing these things. This is a whole new thing. Now, we have a lot of extra skin here behind at the base of the neck and as you go back towards the hind quarters there's no extra skin so what we need to do is we need to work on this and you know when you give your pet a massage you don't have to you don't have to spend a whole hour giving your pet a massage you don't even have to spend 10 minutes because when you give your pet a massage after a while, you're going to learn, because your pet's going to teach you what it is that he or she wants and how she wants it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Are there more treats over there, Savon? Are there more treats? Yeah. Well, well, listen, we got to show off. Let's make your needs known, Savon. Let's get some more of those liver treats. She makes um, these liver treats for Savon. So they're, they are especially tasty. And he's he's very sensitive about that. So here we are. We're going down the spine. We've got him around to the side. And you can see there's very little extra skin on the hind quarters. So this is something that we need to work on. And also, one of the things that you want to do if you're going to give your pet some massage is you want to establish a time and a place. In other words, you want your pet to know when it's massage time. And the way you tell them that it is massage time 
is that you set up some nice healing music and some of my clients light a few candles to soften to soften the lighting and you you find a place and you always use the same place if it's a small pet you can sit uh, in a chair or on a sofa and your pet can sit in your lap if it's a large place you can find a table and put your pet on the table and a really really good place to give a massage is the top of a washing machine. You just put some uh, blankets on top of the washing machine and get your pet up there and that way your pet is right up to the right level. And when you get ready to give your pet a massage, the one of the things that you do, you've got the music going, your pet's gone outside, gone to the tree, your pet has had a meal, you know, so everything is comfortable. And Oh, well, I know, I know, I know. I'm telling her. I'm saying, listen, we got to have some more treats, Mom. We got to have some more treats. <laughs> that was pretty good, Sabag. That was a good move. Okay, so here's what we're going to do here. So we start. Then the last thing that you do, the, the last minute thing that you do before you actually start the massage is you go. I know you want another treat. We should have just brought the treat dish and put it right here and just, you know, but, but then you would have eaten it all in two seconds and that's not good. So now we have gone down the back. We're gonna start also here. We're gonna go down this, the vertebrae. And that's really easy. You just go down the little vertebrae and you just, and you don't, ha it doesn't take a deep touch. It doesn't, you don't have to push. You just lightly touch. Because even though Sabak is getting a little bit dramatic, he knows that he's getting a massage. And he knows what's happening to him. So here we are. We're down here. We're going to go down the, the vertebrae. And you know these little guys, they go into, they go into heat. Yeah, I know. I know. There's more treats over there, aren't there? So we're going to go down this, we're going to go down this vertebrae. And we're going to go down, we're going to go down the tail. Now, most of the dogs, not all of them, most of the dogs that I give massage to have got sore tails because they run, they jump, they play, they roll over, they do all kinds of things. So, Sabak is letting me uh, work on the tail, which is kind of unusual because a lot of dogs will not let me do that. They just won't let me do it. And that's because they don't want me fooling with their with their sore tail. So now we've gone down the spine. We've done the ears. You can do the ears separately. You can do all of these moves that I'm teaching you. You can do them all separately. And I've got a little bit of stuff up here. Now, we've gone down the throat. We know we've gone down the throat. And we're going to do the shoulders. And you know what you do with the shoulders? And it doesn't matter whether it's a dachshund or a two-pound Pomeranian, or Chihuahua, or whatever, or a Rottweiler, it doesn't matter. You're gonna do it the same way. You're gonna quietly go with the palms of your fingers. You're gonna just quietly go in circles. Now, I can tell you this right now, that there is some heat building here, which is really good. What that is telling me is that this heat is building because it's going into the tissues and it's moving blood around. So that means that we are actually healing this shoulder. And of course, Sabak has, has a sore shoulder. He's a dog, after all. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to do this other shoulder. Yeah, he says, oh, I'm, I know that there are not very many treats left. <laughs> there are not very many treats left, but I'm being good. Okay, so we're working the shoulders. Yeah, I know we're working. Let me do a little bit more and then I'll tell your mother to give you a treat. Now, we're gonna go down, we're gonna do the leg. One of the things that happens with the legs is you want to offer, you wanna give some massage to these legs because you want the blood to circulate on the legs. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Here's another one, working both legs. And if you can, now see, Sabak is letting me handle his paw. A lot, of, a lot of dogs and cats and bunny rabbits don't want their paws touched. 
And Sabak is very good. See, he's he says, "Hey, I'll go with I'll go with reflexology." Yeah, I'll go with canine reflexology. I might even prefer that. I might even think that's better than massage. He is enjoying having his having his paws rubbed and rotating the palms of his feet. Now, one of the things, because it's winter, we need to be careful with your pet's paws. Try, if they'll let you, to put your hands in between all of the paws, because that's where you're going to find rocks. That's where you're going to find... Uh, salt chips, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to find dried mud, that's where you're going to find all kinds of things that make their feet sore. And of course, they're hiding that. They're not going to tell you that they have a sore foot. No, they don't want you fooling with their paws. So now, we are down here and we are rubbing the chest. I know, I know, Sabak, I'm being cruel. But we'll ask, we'll say, okay, come on, Mama. It's time now. It's time for another treat. And let's hope she's not run out yet. Let's hope she's not run out yet. So now, we are now going from the ears all the way down the neck, over, over the shoulders, over the upper arms. We're going down the entire length of the body. Now, Sabak is a small animal. So I am very easily doing this on both sides of his body. But it is, it doesn't have to be. On a large animal, you're gonna go on one side at a time because the animal is large. Now, we are gonna go down here. Yeah, he can have it now. He can't have it now? Okay, not now. Okay, so now we're gonna go down here to the hind leg. Let me do this side because this is where the camera is. We're going to go down here. We're going to do this hind leg. Now, this is where there are a lot of sore points in your pet. Because, let's face it, this is where your pet launches himself or herself when they go flying off the bed or off the sofa or off the car, uh, car seat or when they go roaring down a flight of stairs. These are the muscles that get sore. So you really do want to spend some time, and when you're working a hip and you feel the heat building, just work it gently. Continue working it and bring that blood and healing to the body. Because when the blood and the healing goes to a different parts of your pet's body, then you're carrying away the toxins. And that's an important thing. Because, you know, the truth of the matter is these little guys do have hot toxins. Because, for one thing, they injure themselves. And, you know, if there is one universal pet to a uh, uh, mantra to a dog, it is no pain, no gain. When I'm playing, if it hurts, I just ignore it. Because this is what I'm doing. I'm playing, and it's important. So we're gonna work those, we're gonna work those hips. And also, now I'm gonna turn him around here. And he may not cooperate, but right here, this is where, this is where there's a lot of soreness. And he's small enough that I could just turn him around. And he says, now wait a minute, this is kind of painful. Are you, so if you think it's painful, go to another part of the body. Your job is not to hurt your pet. Your job is to heal your pet. And for animals, we, we talk about uh, deep work. And we really don't do a lot of deep work with dogs, but we do more deep work with dogs than we do with cats. And we do more with cats than we do with bunny rabbits, and more with bunny rabbits than we do with horses. So on a scale of one to four, the deepest work goes to the dog, and we just really don't. See, this is, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hurting him in any way. That is not my intention. I am healing him. And this is a wonderful thing. You know, a lot of humans get massage. There's a lot of different kinds of body work. And some of it is truly painful. I know that anybody who has ever had connective tissue massage, will say, that's the most painful thing I have ever had. And, but, but you have to get that connective tissue moving. 
That's not what you want to do with your animals. Your animals are different. Your animals go right into healing. They go, oh, look, there, now did you see that? He, that was, re, he's kind of releasing tension. He's saying, I'm kind of stressed out. I'm going to calm myself down, so I'm going to yawn. One thing he has not done that I like to see, now all of this is warm. This part of his body is just pulsating with warmth, which is wonderful. So I'm going to recommend that after his massage that he get water, you know, a lot of water for the rest of the day because um, this is to release, this is to get the toxins washed out of his body because we are releasing a lot of toxins. And this gently, you know, he says, okay, I, you know, are we out of treats? It's terrible. Maybe we're out of treats. Now, we're also, one of the things that we're going to do with Sabak, because this is the first time I've done this, that I've worked on with Sabak at all, and he's doing quite well. He says, okay, I'll put up with this. There's more liver treats back there in that pocket, I know. I'll just have to be a good boy for a few more minutes. One of the things that you want to do with your pet, at least every week or so if you can, and it, it, it's easier to do with um, a short-coated animal like Sabak, if you have a Pomeranian or a Poodle or a Shih Tzu or a Havanese or whatever, they may be in a longer coat or a, a you know, uh, Portuguese water dog. I mean, those, those animals have a lot of coats, so you've really got to, you can almost just look at Sabak and tell what's going on. But with these other animals, you do have to run your body, your hands, over the entire body. And what you're looking for, you're going to start at the head and you're going to work back. Now, I'm just going to very quickly, you know, take a look at the teeth because you want, uh, listen, uh, several months ago, I was working with a, a woman who had a pet and she cared for this animal a lot. And, and I said, listen, you need to go to the vet. You've got to go to the vet because this animal has got uh, some teeth issues. The vet had not even told her. They ended up taking out nine teeth. That is not good for your animal to have that much toxin in the mouth because when the teeth have problems, the toxins go down the throat, they go through the stomach, then they go through the kidneys and the liver and the intestines. And then you end up with um, kidney disease or liver disease or heart disease. And you don't need that. That is a whole lot more expensive than getting the teeth cleaned. And if you think that cleaning the teeth is a little expensive, go to your vet and get a toothbrush and some toothpaste. And they have toothpaste, which is uh, what, what humans have, except it's not flavored with sugars and stuff. It's shake flavored so that it's... Uh, it tastes like chicken or something. So, and brush their teeth. So we start with the teeth. Then we're gonna, we're gonna look at the ears. And yeah, I know, I know we're gonna ask for a gift. Gonna look at the ears. Do you see any redness? Do you smell anything? You know, sometimes, and the humans don't know, they haven't gotten that close to the inside of the ears. The ears can be so infected that the animal is not going to hear anything ever again. And the vet is going to have to go in and clean out the inner ear. And by that, I mean there will be no inner ear anymore. And I have no, and it upsets people very, very much when they suddenly realize what's gonna to have to happen to their pet. But their pet is in a lot of pain from ear infection and just hasn't, they notice, well, he's scratching his ears. Well, so what, maybe he does that. You know, my, my third son, you know, um, chewed his teeth, so, chewed his nails. So it's the same thing, it is not. When your pet starts scratching his ears, he probably has an ear infection. So we've gone there, we've covered the head, we've covered the teeth, we've covered the ear infection. Now you're gonna go over the entire body and you, what you're looking for, you're looking for a couple of three things. And fortunately, we're not going to see any of those things on Sabah. You're looking for places where the coat is discolored. 
there may be a patch where all of a sudden it looks like, oh my goodness, this looks like a little gray patch. That could be a bruise. That, that's often what bruises do, especially if you have a schnauzer. Schnauzers uh, really display their bruises quite dramatically. But the other thing you're looking for is you're looking for, for lumps. You're looking to see if you find any lumps. And you know, in a short-haired dog like, like Sabak, you're gonna pretty well see the lumps. But uh, you still wanna go along and see if there's anything that you feel which might be a lump. Now that's very disturbing to a human being to all of a sudden you're giving your, your pet a massage and you're doing this um, kind of survey of the body and all of a sudden you realize, you know, there is a lump there and uh, listen, take them to the vet, find out what it is. Animals do not have cancerous lumps like humans do, not nearly as often. So having a lump for your pet is not nearly as uh, dangerous as it is for a human being. However, you still want to get it looked at and you want to get it taken care of. Okay, so what we want to do is when you are going over your pet's body with your hands, you may notice also, in addition to lumps, you may notice one or two things. You may notice a cold spot or a hot spot, and that's good. If you notice a, a patch of skin that seems hot, that's because it's a recent injury and blood is going to that area to carry away the toxins. Now, if you notice a spot that's cold, that's an old injury. So you may want to do a little bit of massage to kind of bring some blood into it to, to wash away the toxins. And then finally, one of the things that you want to do is you want, if your pet will let you, and listen, Sabak is really good about this, but they may not, is see if you can rotate the tail. And most animals, are not going to let you. So what you want to do is make sure that you do this. Whether you have a dog that has a fluffy tail, which is called a plume, or whether your dog has a tail, you want to do that. Just very slowly, maybe once a week, twice a week or something. Try to, try to, uh, because that's, you know, you want the, the tail needs to be, um, it needs to be healthy. I mean, that's a, an important part of your animal, is a tail. And then you want to tell your animal, Sabak, it was a wonderful massage. You came through your first massage with me with flying colors, and I loved having you as a guest on my table. And I hope we'll get to have you back again. And thank you very much very much. Be sure and watch the other canine massage therapy demonstrations because that's how you're going to learn. And eventually we're going to have some animals that are here for their second and third massage because after they've had their first massage, they calm down quite a bit. So once again, thank you very much. Let's live with Thurman Greco.